Welcome to our journey through the chronicles of African history, where today we delve into the stories of the greatest leaders this vast and diverse continent has offered to the world. Leadership, a word often tossed around in the corridors of power and academia, is much more than just guiding a group or ruling a nation. It's about vision, courage, and the unwavering commitment to an ideal greater than oneself. In a historical poll, the leader of the liberation movement of Guinea-Bissau and Cape Verde, Amilcar Cabral, was voted the second greatest leader of world history. This result reflects not just an acknowledgement of Cabral's remarkable qualities, but also highlights the need for greater recognition of African leaders in world history. The limited number of African leaders on such lists is not a reflection of a lack of great leaders in the history of Africa, but rather a gap in our learning and acknowledgement of their contributions. Cabral, a man who stood for the liberation and advancement not only of Guinea-Bissau and Cape Verde, but for all humanity, embodies the essence of true leadership. It's about setting an example, sometimes sacrificing personal gain or even one's life for the greater good of the people. It's about maintaining peace and harmony, often in times of turmoil and adversity. And remember, great leaders are not always those who wage wars or expand empires. Often, they are those who foster unity, instill hope and fight for justice. They lead not by enforcing authority, but by empowering others. They inspire not through fear, but through their own example of integrity and dedication. Let's uncover how these leaders shaped not only their nations, but left a legacy that continues to inspire generations across the globe. Welcome to a journey of discovery, inspiration and admiration. Welcome to the stories of Africa's greatest leaders. Let's start with the one with maybe the most charisma. Thomas Sankara, hailed as the Chi of Africa, was a dynamic and charismatic leader who revolutionized Burkina Faso with his progressive vision during his four-year presidency. He tackled major challenges head-on, dramatically reducing illiteracy and child mortality and battling desertification all without the crutch of foreign aid. Sankara was a champion of social justice, fervently advocating for gender equality. He stood against forced marriages and genital mutilation and broke new ground by promoting women to high government roles, even forming an all-female personal motorcycle bodyguard squad. Not just a political trailblazer, Sankara was also a man of arts and culture, showcasing his musical prowess by composing Burkina Faso's national anthem. His leadership style was infused with infectious charisma and popularity boldly rebranding Upper Volta to Burkina Faso, meaning land of honest men, he steered the nation towards a fresh, promising direction. Sankara fearlessly critiqued former colonial powers, particularly France, challenging their continued influence and adamantly refusing to repay colonial-era debts. Sankara's ambitious vision transcended national borders. He dreamt of a united Africa, free from the chains of exploitation and oppression. His courage and revolutionary ideals not only endeared him to many, but also painted him as a threat in the eyes of former colonial masters. Tragically, his journey was cut short by a betrayal that led to his assassination in 1987. Yet, the legacy of Thomas Sankara lives on. His courage, innovative leadership, and unwavering commitment to justice, equality, and the unity of Africa continue to inspire and resonate across the continent and beyond. Because of these qualities, he was also called the new Nkrumah, which directly leads us to Kwame Nkrumah himself. Kwame Nkrumah, a name synonymous with visionary leadership, forever changed the course of Ghana's history and ignited the flames of independence across sub-Saharan Africa. Rising as the architect of Ghana's liberation in 1957, Nkrumah's charisma and unwavering commitment to pan-African ideals set the stage for a continent-wide movement towards self-governance. From the early days in the Gold Coast, Nkrumah's leadership style was a blend of passion, pragmatism and radical vision. He embarked on an ambitious journey to reshape Ghana, focusing on sweeping infrastructural development, education and healthcare advancements. 
His belief in African unity and a strong stance against neocolonial influences showcased his deep understanding of international politics and a future beyond colonial rule. Though his reign eventually tilted towards autocracy, the early years of Nkrumah's rule were marked by an undeniable charisma and a profound connection with the Ghanaian people. He emerged not just as a political leader, but as a beacon of hope and symbol of unity for an entire continent. Nkrumah's legacy is a tapestry of triumph and complexity, painting him as a pivotal figure in the narrative of African history. His story continues to inspire, reminding us of the power of visionary leadership in shaping the destiny of nations. I guess everyone agrees with me why Sankara and Nkrumah are on this list. But how about our next leader? Queen Nzinga of Ndongo and Matamba was an exceptional leader whose life was marked by strategic brilliance and resilience. She was a master of diplomacy and warfare, successfully defending her kingdom against colonial powers for decades. Nzinga's leadership was characterized by forming strategic alliances and personally leading her troops in battle, earning the trust and respect of her people. Her early involvement in state affairs under her father's reign showcased her precocious political and military skills. Despite societal norms, she outshined her brothers in leadership and negotiation. Nzinga's reign began amidst turmoil caused by Portuguese colonization and the Imbangala mercenaries' brutal tactics. Following her brother's suicide, she ascended the throne, implementing guerrilla tactics against the Portuguese and rallying slaves to her cause. Nzinga's reign was also marked by her diplomatic acumen. She skillfully negotiated with the Portuguese, even adopting Christianity to secure peace. Despite betrayals, she persisted, eventually forming an alliance with the Dutch against the Portuguese. In her later years, she secured her kingdom's independence through another peace treaty with Portugal, converting to Christianity again to gain papal recognition. Nzinga's legacy as a strategic and resilient leader is undeniable. She left a lasting impact on her kingdom and is celebrated as a symbol of resistance in Angola's history. However, we shouldn't forget that she was rather a calculating strategist than a real patriot. Nzinga was interested in her own advantage and had no scruples about subordinating African interests to her own. She profited from controlling the slave trade in particular for decades, and in terms of her pacts with constantly changing allies, she could certainly be called an African sister of Machiavelli, which is not necessarily a compliment. Nevertheless, her leadership was exceptional. Her innovative way of exercising power could have served as a model for other African rulers to defy the technically superior Europeans. As for Nzinga, I wasn't quite sure about putting the next on the list or not, because Nelson Mandela is a tarnished icon. But still, as this list is about leadership, I think he deserves to be mentioned. Nelson Mandela's leadership was a blend of profound courage, unwavering determination, and a deep commitment to justice. Emerging as a key figure in the fight against apartheid, his resilience during 27 years of imprisonment became a beacon of hope. What set Mandela apart was his ability to emerge from this adversity without bitterness, advocating for reconciliation and unity in a divided South Africa. As South Africa's first black president, his inclusive approach and emphasis on forgiveness over vengeance transformed a nation scarred by racial segregation. His legacy as a leader transcends political achievements. It lies in his extraordinary humanity, his ability to inspire change through compassion, and his unshakable belief in equality and freedom for all, which is for the oppressed and also the oppressor. Mandela remains an enduring symbol of the power of positive leadership to overcome the most daunting of challenges. The next on the list shows us that great leaders can be born anywhere and courage knows no age. Nanaya Asantoa, a remarkable leader in African history, exemplified exceptional courage and strategic acumen. At 60, she became the commander of the Ashanti army, leading the resistance against British colonialism in the War of the Golden Stool. This conflict was not merely a battle over an artifact, it was a fight for the soul, unity and future of the Ashanti empire. 
The golden stool symbolized the spirit and sovereignty of the Ashanti people, making its defense a crucial act of resistance. Ya Asantwa's leadership was characterized by her ability to mobilize and inspire. Despite the overwhelming force of the British, she skillfully utilized guerrilla tactics, psychological warfare, and starvation strategies. Her direct involvement in battle plans and execution showcased her commitment and bravery. Ultimately, her defiance and strategic prowess in leading the Ashanti army for months against a superior enemy demonstrated her exceptional leadership and indomitable spirit. Ya Asantua's legacy transcends her time, representing the power of resilience and the enduring spirit of a people fighting for their identity and independence. Her story is a testament to the profound impact one determined leader can have in the face of formidable challenges. We often remember leaders who emerged in times of war and distress. However, perhaps the greatest challenge lies in maintaining peace and establishing power among the people. This was the approach of our next great leader, Julius Nyerere, fondly known as Mwalimu or teacher in Swahili, was a paragon of visionary leadership and principled governance. As the first president of Tanzania, his leadership was marked by a profound commitment to equality and unity. Nyerere was instrumental in Tanzania's peaceful transition to independence in 1961. He championed the cause of Ujamaa, a form of African socialism focusing on rural development and communal farming to foster self-reliance and combat poverty. Nyerere's leadership extended beyond economic policies. He was a strong advocate for education and placed great emphasis on national unity, successfully integrating diverse linguistic and cultural groups into a cohesive national identity. His foreign policy was based on non-alignment and support for liberation movements across Africa, earning him respect as an influential leader in the continent. Despite challenges, Nyerere's integrity, humility and dedication to his nation's welfare made him a beloved leader. His legacy lives on in Tanzania's continued peace and stability and in the enduring relevance of his ideas on African development and self-determination. Nyerere's famous quote, There is no time to waste. We must either unite now or perish, leads us directly to our next leader on the list. Abd al krim a prominent figure in the fight for independence in the early 20th century, was a remarkable leader known for his strategic acumen and resilience. As the leader of the Rif rebellion against Spanish and French colonial powers in Morocco, he demonstrated exceptional military and diplomatic skills. Born into a family with a strong tradition of religious scholarship, al krim merged his intellectual prowess with tactical brilliance successfully establishing and governing the short-lived Republic of the Rif. His leadership was characterized by his ability to mobilize and unite diverse tribal groups, fostering a strong sense of national identity and purpose. al krims strategies in guerrilla warfare were notably advanced for his time, inflicting significant defeats on superior colonial forces. He even inspired Che Guevara and Ho Chi Minh with his guerrilla tactics. Despite eventual capture and exile, his legacy as a freedom fighter and a symbol of resistance against colonial domination endured. al krim is remembered not only for his military achievements, but also for his vision of an independent and unified Morocco, a dream that laid the groundwork for future struggles for independence in the region and Arab nationalism. His life remains a testament to the power of determined and visionary leadership in the face of overwhelming odds. About a century before El Krim, North Africa witnessed another resistance fighter who rose to become a great leader. Lala Fathma Ensuma, revered as Algeria's symbol of resistance, was a formidable leader in the fight against French colonization. Strongly rooted in her Islamic faith, she led the people of Kabylia with strategic guerrilla tactics, successfully challenging the colonizers. Her leadership transcended mere military prowess. She was a beacon of hope and inspiration for her people. Despite facing mockery from her soldiers for her physical appearance, she commanded respect and awe through her actions, proving her mettle on the battlefield. Tales of her divine gifts, such as foresight and healing powers, added to her mystique, bolstering her status as a revered figure. 
Lala Fasma and Zimmer's resistance, akin to a David and Goliath battle, ultimately fell to the French forces. However, her legacy as a national hero in Algeria endures. She is remembered not just for her military acumen, but for her unyielding spirit and unwavering commitment to her people's freedom and dignity. Her story remains a powerful testament to the enduring spirit of resistance against overwhelming odds. The next leader on our list holds the title of richest person in history, but he was much more than just the sum of his gold. Mansa Musa, ruler of the Mali Empire in the early 14th century, stands out in history not merely for his wealth, but for his visionary leadership. More than just inheriting a prosperous empire, he chose to enrich his realm with knowledge and culture. Musa's transformative approach led to the establishment of Timbuktu as a beacon of learning, attracting intellectuals and scholars from across the known world, including the great poet Al Sahili. Under Musa's rule, Mali was not just a land of material wealth, but a hub of intellectual exchange. His pilgrimage to Mecca is remembered not only for its opulence, but for how it fostered intellectual and cultural ties with distant lands. Musa's reign was marked by a unique blend of absolute power and a commitment to education and legal reform. His efforts in documenting history and law initiated a shift towards a more objective historical narrative and a democratic exchange of knowledge. Mansa Musa's reign was more than a display of wealth. It was a testament to the power of knowledge and cultural exchange in building a strong, cohesive society. His legacy endures as a symbol of the rich, complex history of Africa, inspiring generations with the values that continue to shape West African culture into the 21st century. Mansa Musa was actually also part of this aforementioned ranking of history's greatest leaders, which paves the way for our next illustrious figure, Amil Kar Cabral, who is an indispensable part of this video. The story of Amil Kar Cabral is one of extraordinary leadership in the face of seemingly insurmountable challenges. Born in 1924 in Guinea-Bissau and later educated in Lisbon, Cabral emerged as a key architect in the struggle against Portugal's dictatorial colonial rule in Africa, a rule that denied Africans their right to self-governance. His leadership extended across Portuguese colonies, including Angola, Mozambique, Cape Verde, and Portuguese Guinea, now Guinea-Bissau. Cabral exemplified greatness not just through his military and strategic acumen, but in his ability to unite people. He galvanized nearly one million Guineans, including illiterate peasant farmers who spoke different languages, into a cohesive force. With limited outside support and facing opposition from NATO-backed Portuguese forces, they fought valiantly to liberate their country and began building a new society where they were the decision-makers. Cabral's vision and leadership led to significant advances in Guinea, threatening the Portuguese government to the extent that they plotted his assassination in 1973, just before Guinea-Bissau achieved independence. His murder marked a tragic moment in the history of liberation struggles, but it did not extinguish the flame of resistance he had kindled. The armed liberation struggles under his guidance not only precipitated revolution in Portugal, but also marked the beginning of a new democratic era in the country. Amil Kar Cabral's life and work remain a beacon of inspiration for many Africans and people worldwide. His story is a testament to the belief that people, regardless of the obstacles, are capable of being their own liberators. Cabral's profound impact on the course of history, both in Africa and Europe, underscores the transformative power of dedicated and visionary leadership. As we wrap up our journey through the inspiring annals of African leadership, We've seen how true leaders can shape nations, inspire hope, and drive monumental change. Their stories remind us that leadership is not about power, but about purpose, unity, and sacrifice. But let's pause and consider a provocative thought. In our modern world, do we still need leaders in the traditional sense? Did we ever need them? Should we say goodbye to icons? Could our societies evolve to a point where the concept of a single leader becomes obsolete, like Ella Baker said, strong people don't need strong leaders. Are there lessons from these historic figures that suggest new models of governance, 
I invite you to share your thoughts on this. Do leaders bring more harmony or division? Could we envision a world without them? Your insights are invaluable. Thank you for joining this exploration. Remember to like, share and subscribe for more intriguing discussions. Drop your views in the comments below. Until our next adventure, keep reflecting and questioning.